Hi, this is GM Tips episode 6 for the One Ring Role Playing Game, a series in which I talk about the One Ring Role Playing Game, the system, the mechanics, and my experiences of GMing this great game. I'm going to keep it brief today. I've got a really short episode planned all about hazards, and it ties into the previous episode, which was all about journeys. I touched on hazards in that episode, but um, it's worth diving a little bit deeper into hazards and um, exploring how you can best use them in your games. Hazards are intended to be a kind of way of breaking up journeys and adding a little bit of colour to journeys in a way that gets the players back into the game because journeys are very much about GM spotlight time and narrating the the landscape and the weather and the seasons and the, the things that are going on around the characters as they journey. Hazards are a way of bringing the action back to the characters and, and the heroes. So just to reiterate the rules on hazards, they are triggered during a journey when the players roll a Eye of Sauron on the feet die. And as written, the GM, when a hazard is triggered, rolls a feet die, consults a table, and then applies a hazard to a particular role, um, a, a character who is fulfilling a role within the party during that journey. So I, I prefer to trigger the hazard, uh, to apply the hazard to the character who, who triggered it. So if it's triggered by the scout, if the, that player rolled the Eye of Sauron, then it just makes more sense to me to apply the hazard to that character. And one of the reasons that I choose to not apply the uh, rolling on a table to see which character the hazard is applied to rule is that it really slows the whole thing down and hazards are just a part of a journey they're not necessarily that important to the campaign or the narrative they're just a little bit of color for the landscape and the the region that the the characters are in so anything that kind of bogs the game down in mechanics where you have to look things up or explain rules and remember oh yeah it works like that if it's, if it's really not that significant a thing, then it's probably not worth doing. You want to just keep the flow, the natural feel of the, the storytelling around the table going. I mean, there's, there's some stuff about spending hope to enable any character to have the hazard test instead of the character that would be have it applied to on the table and just, eh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. So just apply it to whoever triggered the uh, triggered the hazard with an eye of Sauron, nice and simple. If if you're playing with the um, with the eye of Sauron, no, the hunt awareness mechanic from um, from the Rivendell expansion, um, then it also triggers the um, the awareness level on that. I forget the exact wording. I'll look it up. Um, but if you if you're using that rule, then um, hazards also apply to that, which is nice for a GM who wants to uh, start applying the pressure to their players. By the way, that's a really good rule. Um, that that um, mechanic from the Rivendell book. <clears throat> if you've ever played the War of the Ring board game, you'll recognise the hunt awareness mechanic as being a real nod to. Um, to uh, the, the gameplay of War of the Ring board game and how the free peoples and the companions move around, um, move around Middle Earth in that game. So a couple of things about hazards. They are all about adding colour to a journey, breaking it up, making the region feel lived in and making it come to life, making it feel threatening whatever kind of fits in with with your campaign you can scale them so the risk reward of a hazard doesn't necessarily need to be as low powered as it is in the core book it can be much more impactful and have greater consequences like the example hazards in journeys and maps it's important to think about why you are including hazards if you're choosing to have hazards as part of your journeys then what is the purpose of a particular hazard in a particular journey during your campaign? Um, 
is it going to be to give the heroes a small test and give them a chance to advance and get you know get an advancement point and overcome the test and start to level up a little bit or are you do you want to really test them do you want to give them some serious consequences to failure um and those consequences can be a range of different things um, it's important to kind of have that in your mind before you actually trigger the hazard. So think about consequences of hazards way in advance. So what's the level of that test? Is this a, a kind of minor test which the, um, which the hero is probably going to knock out of the park and earn an advancement point if that's what you want them to achieve? Or is this a test that is genuinely um, targeted at them and at their skill set and the consequences are steep. So you've thought about what kind of test to fit the role, fit the character, what skills they might be tested on. If it's a scout, are they going to be tested on explore? If it's a huntsman, are they going to be tested on hunting? If it is a guide, are they going to be tested with travel? If it's a lookout, awareness, those things all kind of make sense, but you can think a little bit differently about it as well. So maybe there are some strange tracks that don't really make sense or some runes along the side of the path that the heroes have never seen before. Well, that could be a riddle test. Maybe the heroes can hear some strange singing coming from somewhere and it's kind of enchanting them. Um, you know, you could make a song test out of that. So... The scope within hazards to explore different things and try different things, certainly. The scale of the risk, the consequences for the hazard should fit the, the journey that the, the characters are making. So are they going through dangerous territory? Um, are they in borderlands or wildlands or shadowlands? What kind of level of threat is there? And hazards should be tailored to a region in terms of lore and fluff and colour. So let's get into some consequences, because consequences are, ultimately, these are the tools in your toolbox as a GM. These are the things that you can hurt the, the players with, really. You can hurt the, the heroes and make the test more meaningful to them. So the first thing you can do is you can make the hero temporarily weary or temporarily miserable so weariness and being miserable are usually triggered in a very formal way through the loss of hope or through the loss of uh, endurance points but why not as a gm kind of point the finger at them and say okay you're temporarily weary and it lasts uh, till the end of the session or um, perhaps shorter than that you could have shadow points as a consequence. Probably wouldn't want to throw too many at them and certainly not permanent shadow points, but why not one or two shadow points as a consequence of failing a, a, a significant hazard? You can make them spend hope. So just make the target number higher. Um, give them a target number of 18 or 20. Make them spend hope. Alternatively, you could... Um, and this is in the this is in journey and maps you could just make them lose some hope so you can say the consequences of failure for this test are that you lose one hope that's going to hurt them again similarly to shadow points don't overdo it don't punish them for what's essentially a small break in a journey uh, lastly you can affect the game in a more narrative sense than a mechanical sense so instead of points and things like that think about the objects they have and the relationships that they have so if they've got a weapon that they're particularly fond of maybe it got blunted because they tripped over and fell on a rock um you know maybe um maybe the bread was turned out to be poisoned during the hazard and now the other players blame that character over there and uh, they lose their fellowship focus bonus or something like that actually provisions are a really good one so spoiled provisions um, making them face hunger so that they you know potentially unless they go hunting they they're gonna lose hope they're gonna 
maybe get some gain some fatigue points that's a good thing to explore as well so just to wrap up on hazards some key things it needs to fit the situation the region needs to fit your campaign the purpose of a hazard is very specific it breaks up a journey and adds a little bit of color don't get too bogged down into how they work and uh, writing huge kind of examples of hazards just have them in the back of your mind have a couple of ideas in your back pocket and be prepared to go with the flow on the evening when you actually play because uh, the players may tell you that they're interested in going in one direction they might end up going in a completely different direction so don't overwrite and over prepare things like hazards because you might not need them in the end uh, in terms of tone and scale they need to fit your game they need to fit the story that you as a group of players and a gm are telling together so you know don't don't suddenly have eagles swooping in or um you know lovecraftian creatures appearing from uh, a chasm just make sure that you you're comfortable with the scale and the, the tone of your of your hazards and then lastly if you are using the eye of mordor rules from uh from the rivendell supplement then hazard is going to also trigger the eye awareness it's going to raise the eye awareness by one because it's <clears throat> because it's an eye of sauron being rolled outside of combat um, so that's a nice little bonus for you as a gm so that's it from me on hazards i didn't want to go too far down the rabbit hole on hazards they're a very small part of the game but they can be quite effective in breaking up journeys and um, throwing some good tests with consequences at your heroes again thanks for watching thanks for all of your comments and feedback it's really useful the more feedback that I get, the more the, the content will improve um, and hopefully the more useful it will be for, for new players and new GMs. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.